a brand new update has officially been released for rise of kingdoms and with it comes a ton of small changes that we're going to go over in today's video and then later in the video we're going to go over who i think the mystery commander is that was revealed during the sixth anniversary live stream for rise of kingdoms so make sure you stay tuned for that but first what's going on guys cheers now the first thing we're going to go over here is a small change to shajar now this screenshot is credit to ihara they made a video about this but cho young and shajar are already showing up in the Chinese version of Rise of Kingdoms. Now, the developers for Rise of Kingdoms have officially stated that both of these commanders would be available by the end of the month. And that means that they would be available on September 24th, at least in terms of the Wheel of Fortune, for example. In the past few commander releases, we've seen these commanders come to the Chinese version first. And then the following cycle for my DS governor is when we would get it in the international version. So when they said that these commanders were coming this month, apparently they meant they were coming for the Chinese version because we do not see these commanders in the international release of the game, which means means that we're going to be seeing these commanders in the international version I guess the wheel of fortune will come around October 8th which was originally my predicted release date so at the end of the day it turns out that I was on the money all along I thought that they were going to do a faster release cycle with 56 days it turns out it's still going to be a 70 day release window so I feel vindicated and happy to know that my predictions for these release cycles are accurate now the other thing here is the skill tree has been changed to the support tree and truthfully I don't care really I don't think it matters at all this commander is clearly meant to be a secondary commander and so the talent trees are not going to do anything anyway if you guys didn't know if you're new to the game the secondary commander's talents don't do anything and there is a big emphasis on this commander's active skill where you would want them to be the secondary so at the end of the day this is really not going to change much now there is an argument to be made that if she kept the skill tree then you would be more likely to use her as a primary for example maybe with Yuge Liang as the secondary because then there's some bonuses to skill damage in the skill tree there's also bonuses for the secondary in the skill tree as well which means it would apply to Juge Leong's active skill after all she does have a 2800 single target skill shot which is quite a lot of damage and so it, it would have been I guess nice to have the option of having her with the skill tree but I mean at the end of the day again I think most people were looking at her as a secondary anyway so really it doesn't move the needle in my opinion the other thing too is that it makes a little bit more sense for her to be a support tree commander because if you look at her kit there's no you know emphasis emphasis on skill damage in her kit at all like yes there is skill damage in the active skill but the rest of her kit there's no bonuses to skill damage there's no bonuses to AoE damage right like a lot of times with archers when they are focused on skill damage you see that in their skills it's reflected you see that with YSG you see that with Yuge Liang you see the AoE damage on Herman Prime uh and you I'm pretty sure you see skill damage bonus on Ashurbanipal as well yeah it's on his third skill so what I'm trying to say is all the archers that are focused on skill damage reflected in their skills and she does not have that she has a very supportive kit to be honest with you guys and so it just makes sense that she would have the support tree also she's got a little bit more march speed than we see on other archers and I think that's a good thing also in the support tree you get hasty departure which gives you a ton of March speed when you leave a building or resource point which is really nice because again archers are very slow and when they have the support tree they are able to jump in and out of nodes a bit more effectively which is always a good thing also the support tree has a better version of rejuvenate so a better rage engine and overall I mean the support tree yes it doesn't deal as much damage as the skill tree but it is a little bit more tanky and it's a little bit more well supportive and so so tanky and supportive are obviously what they wanted to do with Shajar so I think the support tree does make more sense even if it is a little bit of a letdown for some players who for some reason wanted to use her as a primary and use her as like the archer version of Huo I guess is what they were hoping to do I don't think she was going to be that anyway because Huo has plenty of other things that boost his skill damage but regardless she support tree now I don't think it moves the needle she's probably going to be a secondary most of the time anyway so it is what it is but I did want to at least point it out now the next I'm going to go over here a very small change but you might have noticed it already the backgrounds are different for the commanders they have changed 
as far as I can tell, I think they've changed every background in the game. Some of the background changes are very minor, like in the case of, you know, Egypt and things like that. I think there used to be like a platform that they were standing on and things along those lines, but I'm pretty sure they've changed every single background in the game. Now, one of the things that has been a big, big piece of drama, uh, is that for the British background, there's no more barking dogs. Longtime players of the game will know. And even if you've been playing recently, you'll know that uh, historically the British civilization in the back left corner, kind of behind my head here, there were two barking dogs that were kind of like playing or fighting with each other or whatever. And it was just a cute little cool Easter egg to see in the background. Those dogs are gone. So bring back the dogs. My petition is officially in bring back the dogs guys. Anyway, besides that, I actually do think all the updated backgrounds do look incredible they've obviously gone for a more depth of field effect there's more of a bokeh effect on everything in the background uh the backgrounds are just far more blurry but they're more layered there's more layers to them which i think is nice some of them like the chinese civilization far better i think this looks incredible the lighting coming from the top left corner uh this lighting is amazing even with france for example it just feels like the lighting is better it feels like it's just like sunny out or something like that so I do really like a lot of these uh, new backgrounds. I think they're great. However, with Japan, I would say maybe bring some of these trees closer so that way we can see these, you know, the, the Sakura trees or the, you know, Japanese cherry blossom trees. The ones that are closer are like off to the sides and you have to sort of scroll to see them, which is a little bit weird. So yeah, overall, I think this is great. I can see what they're going for. They're going for a depth of field. They're making it more dynamic and bright and uh, it, it just looks better. There is a little bit of space. It, it feels like they're very far. The commanders are very far from, you know, what, where they're supposed to be. So that's a little bit weird to me. It could be the case that they are changing this for the upcoming release of the new commander designs, uh, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But if the new commander designs, we've only seen screenshots by the way, but if these new designs perhaps are 3d models, then maybe the reason that there's so much space in the background is because the camera is going to be able to rotate around. Like you'll be able to like actually look at the commander. I don't know if that will necessarily be the case because the UI still functions the same. So I, I doubt that that will be the case. Also, I do think it's kind of annoying that you accidentally, like, at least for me, sometimes I accidentally scroll to the next commander and I don't really want to do that. I would much rather stay on the screen and just scroll around the commander and look at their whole design. That would be really cool to me, but that's one thing worth noting. Now, uh, I also really like the new Ottoman empire background. I think it looks a lot more clear. I think it just looks better in general. So really loving it. Now, as I mentioned before, let's go back to Minamoto. They did reveal new designs for these commanders. At least they revealed it for Ethelfled, Minamoto, Richard, and Alexander the Great. And the responses to these designs were very mixed. It seems like a lot of people didn't love them. And so my uh, assumption is that with this update, since we got the new backgrounds, it would make sense that we would get the new commander designs here as well. And as you can see, that did not happen. And so it seems like, and I think the devs have already confirmed this, that they are going back to the drawing board and they are going to redesign these commanders again and hopefully present the community with something that they appreciate a bit more. I think that's a good thing. I didn't love the new designs. I thought Minamoto was fine. I thought Alex was good. I actually really liked the Alexander the Great change. The other two were a bit of a miss in my opinion. So I'm happy to see that they are going back redesigning them. Hopefully they will come back better. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is some changes to inscriptions. Now, this is actually all good things. It seems it looks like they've simply made a lot of these inscriptions a little bit better. So they talked about enraged, devious, brawler, daring, and artisan, and also furious. Uh, which previously was called combo. These have all gotten stronger objectively across the board. So if we look at things like this inscription here, furious, it used to be called combo, which was a bit confusing because now we have combo as an attack type for the Delta formation. So they've changed it to furious. They've kept the uh, bonus the same, except they've added a 3% bonus to counter attack damage. So overall, just objectively a better inscription. So if you had it before, it's better now, uh, counter attack damage is not that impactful unless you're in like a garrison but 
yeah so i mean it's a tiny change but it is technically better and then again for enraged devious brawler and daring they have simply added one percent counterattack damage right so all of those that i just mentioned previously they would give you two and a half percent more skill damage now they give you two and a half percent more skill damage and one percent more counterattack damage that is objectively better the good part about this is that you know whether you're on arch formation or wedge formation you're getting the same you know inscription and so you know for arch formation they didn't care about skill damage so if you got devious it was a, a waste because you're not doing skill damage right but now if you get devious at least you get a little bit of extra bonus which is cool in the case of artisan it is very similar to those that we just mentioned except it's three percent more skill damage instead of two and a half that has not changed but they did add counterattack damage here as well and instead of one percent it's 1.5 percent because this is i guess just a more premium uh inscription i don't know but yeah they added counterattack damage to a lot of these just to make it a little bit more universal for the troop types that don't use skill damage which is good now they also changed two other inscriptions here tremors and calm previously these inscriptions said that whenever the troop dealt direct damage or ranged direct damage you had a 30 percent chance to deal extra direct damage slash ranged direct damage to all targets hit by the skill with a damage factor of 100 cooldown five seconds they've changed the wording to state that whenever this commander's troop uses an active skill so I don't know if that changes anything functionally like I I don't have these inscriptions I don't think or if I do I wasn't really paying attention to them but the wording has changed from when you deal direct damage to when you use an active skill so those things are different like technically they are different if you look at a commander like if we look at Julia Leong for example his fourth skill deals direct damage to up to three enemy troops but this is not an active skill right and so there is a difference here where previously uh at least based on how it was worded you would expect tremors to trigger on the fourth skill of Zhu Liang because it stated whenever you dealt direct damage and that skill does deal direct damage now it says it's only when you use an active skill and so it is very clear that this will not trigger when Zhu Liang's fourth skill procs and deals damage so what I don't know is did they actually change how this works or did they just change the wording to make it more clear uh that I do not know has it always only been triggered from active skills I I'm really not sure so you guys can let me know if you have this uh, inscription if you used it in the past if you have proof of this changing functionally let me know maybe over on discord my discord is linked down below but it is very possible that that all they've done is just make the text more clear now in the same vein as that calm says whenever you use an active skill you have a 30 percent chance to gain a 10 percent bonus to attack for three seconds uh previously this said whenever the wheelless troop dealt direct damage or ranged direct damage okay so again same changing of the wording don't know if this actually changed how it functions right it may it may not if it did change how it functions I would argue that this is in fact a nerf to these skills for the example that I just gave like with Yugen Liang for example he has a way to deal direct damage that is not an active skill which would give you an extra chance to proc this so uh, you know if they changed it functionally it does seem like these two inscriptions are nerfed unless I'm missing something I'm I bet it was just a wording change that's my assumption but I I don't know so you can let me know in the comment section below if you have proof of any of that okay the next thing that we're going to talk about here was another little bit of a controversial thing and that is traveling with gems um this is for the I mean this is this is for those players that have way too many gems to know what to do with them okay basically you can travel up to 120 times per day Day. and if you tap this little question mark here it will say that for every 10 points of luck you earn your chance of encountering a windfall increases by 0.13 percent now by default your chance of windfall is one percent okay so if I go ahead and spend 30 gems boom there we go uh, I get some trash here which I'm going to just get rid of right away and it boosts my luck to 10 okay so now I have 1.13 percent chance of windfall and that goes up also worth noting the gem cost went up to 50. so this gets really expensive you guys and you can go through and read the rules here what I'll point out to you is the reward list shows that the chance of getting a legendary armament is about seven and a half percent from the windfall 
uh so a good chance that you will still not get a legendary armament even when you get your windfall okay now i do have the gem cost listed here your first gem travel is 30 gems then it goes up to 50 as you see on my screen right here after that it's 100 150 then it's 200 and 200 consecutive then it's 250 250 then your ninth and tenth travels are 300 and then from 11 and onwards it is 350 gems per travel now I, I want you guys to understand here that like I'm gonna travel once again and I'm gonna get garbage right was this worth 50 gems no but imagine this was my 11th travel and I spent 350 gems for this this is trash right it is just objectively garbage so really uh, I don't see who like this should not you shouldn't I mean you shouldn't do this right like let's just be real this is extremely expensive on the gem side so if you have hundreds of thousands of gems and you don't know what to do with them then here's a new thing you can do with them but really this is not for this is not for 99 of players don't do this it's a waste of gems in my opinion uh unless i'm missing something here you can let me know but you can see here that my chance of a windfall has barely gone up so yeah now i actually don't know if this was introduced before this update or not i wasn't really paying attention but if you come into the armament shop here and you scroll down to superior there is the steel skin inscription this is the uh legendary inscription for the new delta formation so this says the wielder's troop gains two percent damage resistance whenever their troop launches a combo attack it takes 1.5 percent less damage for the next 10 seconds this effect can stack up to five times so you can take seven and a half percent less damage which is insane assuming that the duration resets with every time you gain a stack here this is actually quite tanky for delta formation users so this is pretty good honestly I haven't really looked too much into delta formation because as it stands there are no commanders in the game right now that would really benefit from the delta formation in my opinion so yeah but it is worth noting that this is very good you do have combo attacks on Liu, and he gets it you know at least once every 10 seconds for sure i would argue it's probably once every like seven or eight seconds or something like that maybe it's more often but regardless if this timer does refresh every time you gain a new one then it can just keep stacking he could just keep stacking and uh yeah he'll have this five stack up in no time which is very good so this is something I wanted to point out here. They have updated the shop. I don't know if it was with this update or the last one because I wasn't paying attention, but I did notice it. So I did want to point it out. Also added with the update is the new city skins. Now this I did show off in my most recent video where we went over some changes here, but I did want to show you guys that these are officially in the game. So Song of the Depths, you get this from the anniversary event. So I would make sure you, you probably want to get your hands on this, especially on your farms. This has a 5% gathering speed bonus. So this will, will be great for the off season it will be pretty bad for your canyon lineup though so just keep that in mind if you're running this then you're probably going to perform a little bit worse in canyon so your rewards from that might be worse but five percent gathering speed pretty good the other thing is angler's abode this comes from the fisher event the fishing event five percent infantry attack is not very good losing archer health is very bad so overall this is actually quite a bad skin from a you know a stats perspective but from a design perspective this is one of my favorite skins i've seen in a long time like this looks absolutely beautiful i love how this looks i wish that i could transmute this or whatever you call it i wish i could transmog my atlantis skin to look like that just for a change of pace the downside with the transmog feature is that you can only make legendary legendary and you can only make epic epic so if i wanted to use that city skin then you know it's it i can't unless i want to use a literal inferior skin so i think that's probably like one of the biggest problems i think with the current transmog system it's that i can't i don't have any compatible skins here so if the devs are watching i would encourage them to consider letting you transmog you know to different rarities of skin i don't see how that would really change anything i mean i guess you could say like you know someone could transmog to this and then secretly be using a cavalry zenith of power skin and then you would like think that they're bad but they're better that would only really play a role in like rallying garrison scenarios so yeah but i don't know i think it would just make the entire system a bit more accessible also of course on the wings of sailcloth this is the new zenith of power skin i think it looks absolutely incredible this is one of the best skins i think that we've seen in a long time it looks like nothing we've ever seen before your entire city 
is a ship on the water which i think is amazing and this goes to show that we are moving towards a uh, very you know ship based naval warfare style of events lately which is very interesting now the other thing that i want to point out here besides the city skins we do have a new value bundle here in the shop it's called ancient legacy they have replaced the previous museum bundle with this museum bundle it looks like it costs the same but it uh it, it's got just more things in it apparently i have not bought this and i don't really need it to be honest with you at least not right now so yeah also did they change the reflective pattern on the floor here it looks like the the floor reflects the bundles which is interesting was that always like that am i bugging like what is that okay anyway yeah if you are a spender and you needed more currency for some of the museum relics then there you go you can get that bundle okay now the last thing i want to talk about here is who is this gentleman that we saw in the sixth year anniversary live stream okay uh there's been lots of people throwing out their guesses in my comment section and a lot of people have said a lot of things a lot of people think that this is still Ragnar and I want to remind you guys that Ragnar is in the cinematic that he is from okay we know what Ragnar in that cinematic looks like he looks like this which honestly is badass but you can see that his chainmail is clearly silver and so it is just it's just not it's not him it's just not he has gold chainmail we know for sure that these are not the same and also in this live stream the developers did reveal that there was a quote-unquote new face that was shown in this uh cinematic and we know that Ragnar is not a new face he's been in the game for a few years now so it can't be Ragnar now another person commented that it could be Harold Sigurdsson which I think is so funny right it's so cute because that means that there are people watching my videos that are not in season of conquest they don't know that Harold is already in the game but what we do know from the cinematic is that this new key story is probably going to be a kvk story right uh they made that pretty clear they also said that this key story is going to be between the vikings and the anglo-saxons for control of the british isles so it's a viking invasion of the british isles and here you could see that the vikings with their shields are blocking the uh anglo-saxon soldiers which apparently are attacking with no weapons it's just their fists it looks like literally not even a blade no nothing they just ran into the shields what are you doing you're gonna just you're just gonna die like okay awkward a uh, bit of of a strategy there but anyway here we see a tier five viking stand up and then he goes to swing his blade and it cuts to this part of the cinematic where we see this new commander now i'm calling this a new commander because this is i mean technically i don't think they said it's a new commander but in the sort of starting screen for this live stream this figure was present in the same room as a bunch of different commanders right and so it would be very weird for them to include a non-commander in that scenario also in this cinematic the only other non-soldier figure we see is Ragnar and Ragnar is also a commander so there's like a bunch of different signs pointing towards this being a commander I think this is a commander I think we can all agree on that gold armor holding a sword eventually we do see his uh sort of front facing stance here which is what I used for my thumbnail you can see that he's got I don't know if this is supposed to be like water behind him or like a sort of bluish like smoky glow which I think is really cool but he stomps down and then afterwards you actually see Odin comes uh I'm assuming this is Odin but in the sky like this giant sort of Viking God comes out of the sky here I assume it's Odin now they did you know in this cinematic say King of all Britain right they said King of all Britain and that kind of threw me off because I was like okay well who are some British Kings right like what are some historical kings of Britain and I think that a lot of people in the comment section below or, or in the comment section of my video did get it right I think that and and here's the moment I was talking about he stomps his foot and then that that giant like Viking God arises so a lot of people commented that it could either be Athelstan or Canute and I'm leaning towards Canute now if you guys don't know who either of them are Athelstan was king of the Anglo-Saxons from 924 to 927 and king of the English blah 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 he was regarded as the first king of England and one of the greatest Anglo-Saxon kings he never married and had no children I'm pretty sure Ethelfled was his aunt 
if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong about that you can let me know in the comment section below but he does have some sort of relationship to Ethelflaed as far as I know and we do know that of course Ethelflaed already in the game but beyond that other images for this key story show Ethelflaed involved right and so there could be a connection there however is this guy that she's fighting is this the new is this him it's really hard to tell I think it is right I, I do think it is actually because now that I think about it it certainly does not look like Ragnar and Bjorn doesn't have chainmail which you can see here there is in fact chainmail at least not like this type of chainmail plus he has a helmet which Bjorn does not have so I think this actually might be th this guy and if that's the case well I don't think Ethelflaed would be fighting him, right? It just doesn't really make any sense here. Which brings us to Canute. He was the King of England from 1016, King of Denmark from 1018, and King of Norway from 1028 until his death of 1035. The three kingdoms united under Canute's rule and are referred to together as the North Sea Empires by historians. So remember, he was called King of All Britain. Not just King of Britain, but King of All Britain. So perhaps they're referencing the fact that he was king of not just England, but Denmark and Norway. Definitely worth noting. And also, he won the throne of England in 1016 in the wake of centuries of Viking activity in Northwestern Europe. In the summer of 1015, Knut's fleet set sail for England with a Danish army of perhaps 10,000 in 200 longships. Knut was at the head of an array of Vikings from all over Scandinavia. The invading army was composed primarily of mercenaries. The invasion force was to engage in often close and grisly warfare with the English for the next 14 months. Practically all the battles were fought against the eldest son of Ethelred Edmund Ironside. Pretty sure this is Ethelstan's brother, if I'm not mistaken, which would mean that logically Canute was fighting the English at the same time that Ethelfled was alive, which makes this screenshot make a lot more sense. It, it, I mean, it, it really feels like it's coming together here. So to me, I think we're getting Canute in the game. That is my uh, opinion and i'm wondering how this commander is going to be in the game and now that i look at his helmet this is definitely the same guy as this like just the tip of the nose of the helmet is literally identical like it's it's, it's right there so i'm pretty sure that this dude is fighting ethelflaed in that picture so i don't think it is somebody related to ethelflaed now we know that this commander is coming as part of a key story which means it's probably going to be a KVK. I don't think they explicitly said it was a KVK, but they talked about it during the part of the video where they talk about KVKs and KVK stories. So like, I'm, I'm like 99% sure that this key story is a KVK. So will this commander be a KVK exclusive commander in that you can only use him in that KVK, or are they just going to be like bringing him into the game? at the same time as the kvk as some big event that could be the case or you know is the winning faction of of the kvk or the winning side of kvk will they be rewarded with unlocking this commander afterwards like we saw for example with charlemagne and wuzetian i've talked in the past about how i think these commanders are quite bad but you do actually get to unlock them at least originally from the from kvk right winning kvk season one and two so is it possible that we will be seeing this new commander be a reward for winning this specific kvk in season of conquest that is possible it's also possible and i don't want to get my hopes up here but it is possible that this commander is put into expedition after Ethelflaed. Now, the reason that I say that is because what do you know? They have updated the expedition. They have updated how the expedition looks. They've literally changed how the flags look. I don't know why they did this. And in fact, it's actually a little bit less clear now because previously every five you know stages was a sort of boss stage and you would actually get more rewards from it you can get legendary commander sculptures things like that also these sort of offshoot missions where there's like a you know a defense and attack these have just been changed to look identical to the others so truthfully i think this new design is a little bit more confusing for new players honestly it's like harder to tell what these actually are previously they were like different colors I think it was like green and like blue or something like that I don't I don't really know but yeah they've they've changed it so I don't I don't know why they did that but it's worth noting that they changed it right they've changed expedition they are putting time and assets and money into the design of expedition which only leads me to believe that that things are coming to expedition why would they even bother doing this they have not touched expedition 
in six years okay or sorry maybe five years ever since ethel Ethel was put in the game they added these bonus missions and then they haven't literally touched anything in expedition for five years so the fact that they have now actually changed something here means that they are looking at expedition and why else would they look at expedition if not to add more levels or add something new and i think it is possible that we see either a replacement for ethel fled or you know something that unlocks after ethel fled something along those lines and i imagine that it will probably if they do add it it'll probably be another three per day type of thing which is a bummer but the other reason that i think that they are focusing on on expedition right now is because they actually came in here and said that they fixed the display issues with commander skills in expedition mode so apparently some commanders skills were not being shown properly in this game mode so it's not like they're only changing how the map looks maybe to make it look more like the updated graphics but they're actually changing how like the combat looks as well and making it actually function properly and so like it just doesn't make sense for them to be putting any amount of time attention or money into expedition if they're not going to add more levels to the expedition and right we're talking about we're we're on the brink of remastered graphics right which means they're gonna have to change the graphics for expedition anyway and this feels like a new chapter for rise of kingdoms right they're introducing key stories they're introducing you know with that key story is going to come terrain it's going to come coastline there's going to be uh, roads right there's like a whole bunch of new things coming with this key story and we've got the new graphics we're entering into a new chapter for rise of kingdoms and with that it would make sense that we would enter into a new chapter for expedition right i think if they were going to do this now would be the time and also as i mentioned previously this castle it's uh, there's 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 been dots to this castle for five years there's always been an intention from whoever designed this map there's always been the intention of us eventually reaching the castle this is the end of expedition clearly based on the dots and we've never gotten there and this castle literally looks identical to the castle in expedition okay so I feel like there's multiple crumbs here they've updated the way the map looks with the new icons for the levels they have fixed commander skills to look like they should in expedition they're releasing a new key story and one of the promotional images uses Ethelfled who is the commander you get in expedition and she's fighting a Viking in front of a castle that looks like the castle from the expedition and we're getting a new commander outside of the release of mightiest governor and wheel of fortune and also outside the release of a civilization right this commander is no matter who it is it's either a viking or it's an english commander right like britain for example like both those civs are already in the game so we know this commander is not going to come with a civ release and so how else could they implement it it could be from an event but if they were going to release this commander with an event you would think that they would give it to us for this sixth year anniversary event and yet they didn't mention that at all so i mean what how else could we get this commander if not from expedition right and the last thing that i want to say here is that i feel like there is a big emphasis right now on bringing back old players right we we saw this in their reveal video they're literally giving you free gems and keys to get old players to come back to the game with this grand reunion event and if they're going to do that one of the cool things that new players or old players who quit coming back would like to see is hey look new free commander right like this is something that we've been asking them for for years ethel fled has been way power crept out of the game at this point she's really only good in the early game and for pve content which is fine i think that's good but we are long overdue for a new commander and that not only would be great for returning players but it would be great for building the goodwill of the current player base right i mean think about it recently players have complained about the way that the redesigned commanders look they also complained about the way the new graphics looked at least at first they complained about being too green we've had players complaining about them floating the idea of t6 although that has been squashed that is not happening at least not right now uh so they've squashed that but players were complaining about that they were complaining about possibly entering a new era with firearms right there has been a lot of things lately that players have been complaining about and one way for the devs to earn back some of that goodwill would be to give players a way to get a new legendary for free and so the timing here would make the most sense 
if they want to do something to appeal to older players and to bring older players back to the game as well so i don't know guys i don't want to get my hopes up i don't want to you know over promise you guys and say like this is definitely happening i truthfully have no idea like i don't have any insider information or anything like that but i mean based on everything we've seen this would be like the most obvious slam dunk this is when you should do it this is like the story lines up everything lines up the the artwork lines up like they the remastered graphics are coming they've changed the map like it, it lines up so lilith if you're watching please give us please give us a new legendary here please give us something to acquire and again the best part about ethel flight is not that she's just a free legendary but from a game developer's perspective this is a reason to log in every day you want to claim your three heads every single day it is a reason to log in and that gets people hooked it gets people playing the game right and it, whether you're free to play or or a spender in the game you can't speed up your progress for ethel flood you have to log in every day to get her right and so if they replace her with somebody else then you have to log in every day to get her, no matter how much you spend and that gets people coming back playing and earning that new free legendary I think it would be a a win 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 for everybody involved. I want to see them do it. Now's the time. It's been long enough. Let's see it. Rise of Kingdoms. I hope you do it. Anyway, guys, that is everything I wanted to cover in today's video. We went over a bunch of changes with this brand new update. You can let me know what you think about them in the comment section below. And we have narrowed down who this possible new commander could be. I think it will be Knut, and I hope that it is a new expedition commander guys with that being said if you enjoyed this video make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and comment your thoughts on everything we talked about the new update the changes and who you think this new commander is going to be and how we will get them let me know i would love to hear from you guys with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace